Hello, everyone. My name is Bina, and I am super excited to have Judy Thorson with me today. Judy and I have met in Mumbai last year, and we shook hands. We gave a hug. I think I even have a picture with you because it was just so new. And then we had the event in January. And in between, we've just been busy. and We've been trying to connect for quite some time. So this is honestly, guys, a very raw again conversation we're having live. So that way we are connecting. We're going to have what's how our lives are going now. But also, I just want to let you guys know, like what a enormous heart Judy has. And one thing I want to share with you is that Judy has this gracious power that she can walk in the room and be the most powerful woman in the world with being the most silent person in the room. Hmm. And that's a power that I truly believe is just a God's gift for you because I've witnessed this now multiple times and how many acknowledgements you've gotten and it's you're the quietest in the room, but yet you are the most powerful person. How are and you going to make me cry two minutes in already? <laughs> <laughs> I, have the, I have that ability. But I've been meaning to say this to you in person for over, over a year now. And it's just that power magnifies over and over again. And it's not just a one-time event. This is every time you create something, anytime you just come in. And that sense of power is, especially in female and entrepreneurial fe female world, it's people always are wanting to be a talker. I want to do this. I want to do this. I need to be here. I want to be seen. I want to go. I want to show. I want to be the face. And you are just, even though you're all behind the scenes, yes, you're on the face, but you're still just that most powerful person in the room and you're the most quietest person in the room. So I want to acknowledge you for that because that is just a blessing wow. to see. Thank you. I received that. That's mm -hmm. a beautiful acknowledgement and it wasn't always like that as an entrepreneur, someone who's been in this field for many years, there were seasons in my life where it was like, you better recognize, you better know who I am, and I better have my name in lights, and everybody needs to know who I am. And I had a mentor and a mm -hmm. mantra that she used to share that was so powerful for me is, if you don't care who gets the credit, you will be unusually successful. Yeah. That feeling of, it doesn't matter if I ever get the credit, as long as people are being served and people are mm. being transformed and that everything comes from a place of love and service. Mm. And so I want to um, thank you for acknowledging that because it wasn't always that way. Mm. And I think even in just the last few years, that um, groundedness and that power has um, really come more from within other than, oh my gosh, let me get this power from out here, this validation, this acknowledgement, all the bells and whistles, and something that I'm learning for myself and something that I really want the, our whole audience to hear is that it sounds a little cliche, but truly your power is coming from within. Yeah. And everything that you need is already inside of you. Mm -hmm. So quit looking for it outside of you, it's already inside of you. And the more that I really dive into that, the more I feel that sense of power. So thank you for, for noticing. It's very noticeable. And it's for a lot of the people who done the do that have done the work. I want people to realize like in womanhood, um, coaching, a lot of things are still very much male dominant industry. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes it's you can see males, and again, I love males. It comes in. This is no judgment. It's just they can be a little bit more flamboyant sometimes, whereas we can be a little bit more subtle. And it's just a different style of things. But then there's also people who are just in males that are very quiet and reserved, and they're super powerful too. And it's the ones that truly go within themselves and find that passion that I always coach around. Find your passion, find your purpose, because the minute that centers you, the world explodes. Mm. It explodes. 
And yeah. so what is the one thing that you have learned that is your true passion? That's your driving force. So everyone knows it's my children, three kids with special needs. That's my driving force is to be right. that voice, that advocate. Right. So what is your driving force and what's your passion that is, I want to change the world or this is really making me upset and that needs to change? Yes, absolutely. I think now sometimes we find our purpose and our passion and sometimes our purpose and our passion find us, us. Mm -hmm. right? And so if you were to ask me five years ago, my answer would be very different. I lost my son, Jacob, in 2019. I'm so sorry. Is that really loud? No? Okay. But I lost my 18-year-old son, Jacob, in 2019 mm -hmm. to a drug overdose. And nothing would prepare you as a parent to lose a child. It's just not something that's unfathomable, yeah. right? And so for me, there was a sense of almost a defiance of, I'm not going to take this laying down. I am going to fight and be an advocate. And really, Jacob was one of my greatest teachers. He was only 18, um, but he really lived full out. Anything he wanted to do, he created. Anything mm -hmm. he set his mind to in 18 years, he lived more than most 80-year-olds will ever live in their lifetime. And oh. so his example and his life and his death is really the fuel for me to do what I do, which is don't die with your song still inside of you. That's a big lesson for me. And every time I want to do something and I want to create something, it's truly, um, I don't make excuses. I don't yeah. wait for the perfect time. I don't wait till I have it all together. I do it messy. I do it scared. I do it when I don't think I'm ready to do it. And all of those things I learned from my son. And it's really been a, an empowering and of course, tragic situation. But to answer your question, that is what fuels me. That is my why. That is my right. purpose. And I think when you get that intimate with death, you do realize you're not promised tomorrow. What are we waiting for? Go take the vacation. Go tell the people you love them. Go yeah. forgive. Go and reconcile. Go yeah. buy the thing that you've been wanting to buy. Really, if that living life to the full is it's such a great teaching that Jacob has taught me. And I think this is one thing me and you have in common. My son is living. I cannot fathom what you've gone through. But my path chose me, same way. I didn't choose to have a son that was autistic. Actually, today is my son's 10th birthday. Oh, happy birthday. And he cheated death today, actually, before he was born. Wow. And it's one of those situations where it's when something that you cheated death, it comes in. Was this supposed to be, was he supposed to have passed during then? What comes up? It was very traumatic, to be honest. And every day this day, and this is why I'm so happy to have you on today, mm. is because it's that sisterhood level of it's a different understanding when your child, when that something occurs to you and it's your passion finds you or created by another situation. It's that not living in fear. It's that live our life to the fullest type of situation and teaching other women or men or person to do the exact same. And it's because of certain situations that I tell people, your experiences is what builds you. And those are also different things that just makes you who you are at the same time, because you don't do it. You don't, you do things fearlessly. A lot of people I say the same thing with me. They go, aren't you scared? Every day. <laughs> like, if anyone saw my live yesterday, I was crying on live. I was just like, who's listening to me? Why do you care? What's coming in? And now back today, after I processed, after I went through, comes in, it's just like, today's a brand new day. It's okay. How do you tell other people to keep moving forward with their dreams, even though that there's challenges that they're still having to process at the same time? Because me and you might be different where our processing, this might be our process to heal or right. to our healing moment, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas other people that may have gone through 
similar experiences that want to do entrepreneurship. They want to come in because of a traumatic event and they're just realizing that's their why or that's their purpose, but they just don't know how to start because of the fear, limiting beliefs, whatever they want to call it. How do you explain that to other people? Yeah. And I'm sure you will agree with me is that entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. Uh, You've got to be comfortable with rejection. You've got to be comfortable with failure. You've got to be comfortable with, hey, if this doesn't go the way I planned, I can pivot and adapt really quickly. You've got to be uh, comfortable with taking big risks, taking big losses, right? Not everyone is built for this, Yeah. right? And I've been in this for decades. (laughs) So there's a lot of building that thick skin to be able to you know, do what I do now, people will look at my life or my business and think, oh my gosh, she's so successful. Lucky for her. They don't see the blood, sweat, and the tears, right? They don't see all the times that I created things and no one signed up for it. They don't see the times where I started businesses and then they failed. So we're only as good as our last success. And the people that make it are the ones that continue to try and fail and try and fail and are not afraid of that failure, because for me, failure is just feedback. Right. Failure is just a way of showing us, hey, that that didn't work, so try something else. Mm-hmm. I don't get discouraged. I don't take it personal. And so to answer your question, I think entre- in order to really go down this road of entrepreneurship, you first have to have some self-awareness and some emotional intelligence to ask yourself, am I even built for this? Because not everybody is. Yeah. And that's okay. If you're built for, hey, I'm, I'm better at a corporate job where I go in nine to five and do my job and get a paycheck, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But really assessing, okay, how am I built? And am I built for this? Like, we like a on. challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's the, and it's a lot of people would ask, oh, well, if I don't have this trait, how do I develop it? Correct. And the simple answer is just go do it. I know that's not a lot of people are like, I don't understand how, I don't understand the why. And I think that's like the biggest mindset shift is what are, what can you do? Even if I've said this multiple times on multiple platforms is that if my success is based off financial means, then I don't find myself successful. This is just for me. Mm -hmm. If my business has impacted one person And that one person was grateful or changed their lives around to the better Then I am fully successful because that is my one mission. Now, if I can rinse and repeat, that is obviously the, the goal behind it. But it's that finding that sweet spot of who my audience is, what do I want to create? But it goes back down to the passion in your why. And really then just understanding, hey, if I serve one person, amazing. If 10 people show up, even better. But it is that fear rejection like that comes in. Do you remember a time in your coaching of a scenario that was just like really rough for you? Oh, absolutely. Just two weeks ago. (laughs) Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, tell us about your trip. If we're keeping it all the way real. Yeah. So I've done something recently in my practice where I've gotten very clear on who I'm serving. Mm. So clear that you call it your client avatar, whatever Mm. you want to call it, but it's your niche, right? The person that you're serving. And I spent months creating this person. She has a name. Mm. I know exactly how much she makes. Where does she live? Where does she shop? What TV shows does she watch? I know my client avatar so well that I know her better than she knows herself. Mm. I know what keeps her up at night. I know what's giving her anxiety, right? Because Mm -hmm. in order to serve this person, I want to be able to really be in her shoes and know how to support her. And so recently, I'm going to be very vulnerable here, is I had an opportunity to serve a male client that came to me that needed some support. And I ended up saying yes. And we started our contract agreement for coaching. 
And after two sessions in, he was like, ah, this isn't working for me. And can I get a refund? Talk about a blow to my ego. That's never happened. And my old self, my small limited self would have taken that very personal, mm. would have felt all kinds of feelings over that. Yeah. But then I was reminded, no, Judy, you created a, an avatar of the woman that you're serving. Yeah. So why are you upset when this person is showing you this is not an alignment for you? This is yeah. just feedback for, hey, you said you wanted this to go this lane. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Oh, Stay in your God. lane. That le- <laughs> but it was it was painful. I'm not going to lie. That's a little ego challenge. But it was a good reminder for me of remember when you say you want something, stay in integrity to that. And yeah. don't deviate just because somebody wants to work with you, give you money, whatever. If it's not in alignment to what your true core values is, then it's not, it's not an alignment. Don't do right. it. So it was a lesson for me to show myself like, Hey, Judy, if you say you want to do this, stay there and yeah. stay in that lane. So that's one example of what could be a perceived failure. But for me, it wasn't that it was just a reminder of be in integrity with yourself, honor what you said you, what you were going to do and stay in your lane. Yeah. And that's a really big key for a lot of people to understand is that the minute you do create your population, your general area, it's like the best way I can explain this is say you wanted to go to England and the plane is going to England and then that plane went to South Africa. And you were not equipped for South Africa and you're going to England. It's completely different. You're going to pack differently. You're going to travel differently. Your mindset is going to be fully different. And then all of a sudden you line you go to South Africa. It's a completely different mindset. And so when we're coaching, it's the same type of concept is you got to know exactly where your end to end goal is, your end destination is. Because then everyone that wants to go to England are going to be on that plane and have a whole lot of fun going to England. What do I need? Oh, my God, I'm going to get lost. Oh, my God, Paris, it's overwhelming. Like different things, right? Versus it's going to be completely different than that plane traveling to South Africa. And when I say... It's like when you say stay in your lane, it's just, it's the concept of it, right? It's just like if your intention and your plane goes to England and then you end up in South Africa, you're going to walk out and going, I did not plan for this. <laughs> you guys, we got a problem here because yeah. now it's, you're going to, the fears kick in, the limiting beliefs kick in, resentment starts kicking in. Will you figure it out? Absolutely. But it's that intention that goes in is what I'm hearing you say is just that even though, this gentleman, whoever he was, God bless his soul, but he just missed out on you. I just want to tell you that on life. Like you missed out on a powerful ass woman and that's on him. Yeah. And um, he'll share, share something yeah. else that a really powerful coach shared with me. Um, he says, don't take it personal if a client doesn't get the results from working with you. Right. Like it's not because the power is in the listener. So if someone is not getting value or results from your coaching, it's not on you. Right. Right. And in the same token, don't take it personal when a client has massive success and wins and is celebrating and is doing amazing. That's also not on you because the client did that right with your support, with you facilitating your encouragement, whatever. But at the end of the day, the client did that. And so that's another good way for me to just stay in my lane, (laughs) eat some humble pie and just know, (laughs) hey, I'm just here to love and serve. That's my business plan for my business is that, hey, as long as I'm serving and coming from a place of love, I'm successful. I love that you shared that because as you and I both know, there are plenty of people out there in their, according to their bank account, but are not experiencing success. And so success is relative and it's different for all of us. Yeah. And so that's not just the only metric. And for me, if I'm loving and serving the person, I have control over that. I have no control over how that person's going to receive me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm coming 100% from love and service as my intention, then I'm successful. Yeah. Period. 
amazing, powerful women showed up, powerful transformations happened. It was an incredible collaboration with Steve Bacon. It was our first time doing an event together. It was so super successful if you look at it from the outside. But what I'm most proud of is that I was committed to serving and loving those women for the six days that we were together. And that was fulfilled because of who I was being and how I showed up. Mm -hmm. So how do you explain somebody about a place of being? Like if someone came to you, how would you explain that? Because we are in the being movement and I want everyone to understand Judy Thorson is the creator of the entire being movement. Oh no, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> the being experiences. The being experience. experience. But if it wasn't for that first experience, none of this would have occurred. Hmm. So I am going to repeat myself by stating you are the correct, you are the reason this whole being movement is in place. I'm going to put you back up because I want you to acknowledge that. Mm. And when we're going and serving and we're having these powerful conversations, I would have never met you if it weren't for any of these experiences. I would have never met Steve Hardison. I would have never met the openness of this flood of people who have came into my life from just a year and a half ago and still incorporating into my life. And that I honestly have to say thank you for because that was an expansion that I never knew I even needed. So how do you explain to somebody what is, like, what does it mean for you? What is of about being? What does that mean for you specifically? Yeah. Oh, man. Such a, first of all, thank you for that acknowledgement. I, I receive it. Sorry for trying to slap it away from you. <laughs> I receive it. So for me, it is congruence and alignment to what comes out of my mouth, right? If I come to you and say, I am abundant, mm -hmm. I am being abundant, mm -hmm. but I am not congruent to that thought or that way of being because truly in my deep beliefs, I struggle with lack, poverty, and scarcity, right? Mm -hmm. So that is not congruent and an alignment of a way of being. Just because I say something, that's why if you're a part of the being movement, there's a thing that's called the document, right? Where you speak and you share who you're being. Mm -hmm. You can't just say something and not be aligned to it. And so the deep work is how do I get aligned to, if I say I'm this, am I really in my in the depth of my heart, in my my soul, do I really believe this? So I know that maybe feels a little nebulous, but it's about, for me, congruency and alignment to what I'm saying. Yeah. And really, that's authenticity, isn't it? Is right. when your inside matches what's on the outside, that's authenticity. That's yeah. congruency, that's alignment, that's being in integrity with yourself. And so when you say something, really checking in to see, is that really how I'm feeling? Or am I just talking crap? Literally? <laughs> yeah. And I love that. I love that analogy. Because as people are becoming more in people are exploring this, it's exploding on so many different levels. It's that it's the true authenticity that goes behind it, right? Practice what you preach. Mm -hmm. If you're going to commit to something, make sure that level of commitment is there. Meaning for me, it's if I tell somebody I am like, say I'm going to come to your house in two days, I'm going to be at your house in two days. That is where it comes up. I understand life occurs, comes in, but then it's just if that were to come up, just communicate ahead of time. Communicate with somebody. Oh my God, I'm not going to be able to make it because my child is now sick. Because then it's, it's that alignment, right? It's just like what I'm saying it's, it's true to who you are. And then it's just that it's like almost like this humbleness that comes within you, not necessary because you can't teach somebody to be humble. Yeah. Yeah. You can't like, it was like, can you teach that? No, that has to come within. Yeah. I wish I can teach it to some people. <laughs> 
It has yeah. to come within. And that's where that deep work comes out. That's where the trial and errors, the whatever it is. And it's true, like as entrepreneurial and entrepreneurial shit, the more you grow and the more that occurs, the more humble you get. Because if you've noticed, the most humblest person in the room is always the most quietest. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. And I think because when you have nothing to prove, right. you don't have to speak back to being, right? You don't have to speak with your words. You speak by who you're being, right? And you, you don't have anything to prove. You don't have to announce, hey, if you have to say that you're the most powerful person in the room, or if you're the leader, then you're not, <laughs> if you have to say that. So that's so good. And I love what you're saying about the um, integrity with our words, yeah. because that alone, if you're an entrepreneur or in business or just in life, that sets you apart when you actually do what you say you're going to do, because 95% of the world isn't doing that, right? Yeah. How many times do people say, hey, this is going to happen or make promises and then they don't do it. And so that is more the norm. So when you actually do what you say you're going to do, you stand out. Now you're like the minority. Now people are, are like, whoa, there's something special about Bina because she said she was going to do this and she did it. Right. right. And something that I know I hold very dear, it's that one of my core values of integrity is if I say, I'm going to host a retreat in Turks and Caicos, it's going to happen. Yeah. Right. That's, that's and just really for good. our raw conversation, just like how prior to our conversation, we were like, hey, let's even with me and you, let's do a collaboration and so, let's do something by the end of the year. Guess what? That was a raw conversation. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> you yeah. know, but it was just like, it, it's that, oh, great. Now there's two minds building up and then it's just like, wow. All right. So what are we going to do? And it's just that level of humbleness, but it's also that level of respect to an extent. And I say respect very loosey goosey because it's that way of integrity or way of being for me, where if we've stated something, then it's let's follow up. Where's that curiosity going to go? Now, does that mean that something may or may not be created? I'm most likely me and you most likely if we stated in our brains, like I'm sure something's going to happen. And it's that real time of it's the curiosity part. What I tell people is that I know a lot of people have said this before in entrepreneurship. It's that I, when I'm curious, that's mm -hmm. when like my brain starts going and I'm like, oh, what can we do? Where are we going to go? Where are we going to be? Like, what, like all these different minds come through. Yeah. And that's what sparks that level of pushing yourself to do something that may be uncomfortable. I can't do nothing with her. That's Judy. That's Judy. <laughs> or like some people might say that with me in the nurse coaching world, we're like, oh my God, that's Bina. I had a call the other day. They're like, oh my God, you're on a call. And I'm like, what did you expect? Who'd you yeah. expect? You made a yeah. call with me. <laughs> like, I'm showing up, <laughs> you know? Wow. So, Can I say something to that? Yeah. Because this is a really important distinction. I was sharing this in a coaching call yesterday with one of my clients because she put together a program and then someone showed up who she was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this person's in my program. She's all that in a bag of chips. And she started to feel insecure and in making herself small because this person that came in, she was making her so big, right? right? Part of truly owning your power, and this is something Steve Hardison, the ultimate coach, teaches, mm -hmm. is when you get to a point where you're not judging people and you're not making them higher or lower or any kind of hierarchy levels, but truly just one heart to another, one yeah. person to another. And I have seen Steve in action. He is the same with a homeless person under the bridge yep, and a billionaire who's multi, multi-billion. Oh. And he does not change who he's being with those different people. Yeah. And I think when we can really reach that point, that is where true power comes in. Cause then you're able to really look at someone just from heart to heart, exactly. not the story that you create of them. Exactly. That was me a year ago where mm -hmm. it was just like, these are these high influencers comes in. But as I got to know you, as I got to have conversations with you, and even just as I've grown over this past year and a half, it's just seeing him in action, seeing him on different levels, seeing him in Mumbai, 
and just being the same person all throughout the, his day, it really does. It's like learning from experience, right? Learning from observation, learning from, hey, if I embed this into my life, this is one of the main things I can honestly state that I've taken away from in this being movement. It's that humbleness. Like I thought I was humble, but now it's just more of, it's okay. I can call Judy and say, hey, Judy, let's create something. And if you say no, okay, I'm mm. okay with that. I'm going to just be like, great. Can you let me know when you're ready? Or can I reach back out to you? Maybe timing just wasn't that moment. Right. And it has nothing to do with me versus right. maybe a year or two years ago, I would have been like, see that, see, there's another influencer saying no to me. Like, how am I supposed to break grounds? And how am I supposed to break anything if these high influencer people are telling me no? How am I going to be successful? How am I going to bridge social media platforms? And yeah. When someone asked me that question, I just say, just start with every conversation you can have. It all starts with the conversation. And, I, and I'm telling you, when you truly grasp this idea of everyone is your equal, no one is above or below you, then asking is not going to be an issue. You'll have the confidence to ask anyone anything because you know that everyone, whether they're the president or... <laughs> <laughs> They're the janitor, but right. you can have that conversation because it's not about that person. It's about who you're showing up to be. Exactly. And there's really only two answers if you ask a question. 100%. Yes or no. And Honestly, you'll never know if you don't ask. It's a 50-50 chance. And if they say no, then you go to the next person you ask because someone will tell you yes. That's right. And it's that level of simplicity of just heart-to-heart -heart conversations when especially in the nursing world, we like to chase letters, right? A lot of times we want to go with letters and I need to be this certified and this certification. I need to be a sound healer. I need to be this. I need to be a somatic healer. When they present or when people present and even coaches that are not nurse coaches, they present right. in these different, I've taken all these certifications. Yeah. I always have to just remind them going, but who are you? Yes. To a core, just you in your birthday suit, who are you? Yeah. Without clothes on, without hair, who are you? Yeah. Because that is the key thing when we're doing entrepreneurship is that if you are comfortable putting on different layers of clothing and you just know who you are walking in, or if you walk around butt naked, I don't care. Like, it's just, you have to be comfortable. Like you've yeah. got to be you in that yeah. moment. And yeah. That's like a big thing I hear. I see a lot with coaching is just be who you need to be. Right. Live in that power. Find your lane that you want to go to. Find your path and stick to it. Yeah. And success or whatever journey that brings you, is that's your journey. And yeah. every time we deviate, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it does not work. Yeah. It's all perception. I was coaching somebody yesterday and she says, I heard from this coach that I should do it this way. And I, then I heard from this coach, I should do it this way. If you ask 10 coaches how to do something, okay. you're going to get 10 different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. And so the most important person to ask is what is in alignment with you? What, what resonates with you? Um, and there's two letters at the end of our, our name that's the most important than all the letter chasing out there. Do you know what, what it is? No. L-E. And do you know what L-E stands for? The most important of all the letters that we go chasing. No. Lived experience. Because no one can take that away from you. And that's, I know my superpower is my lived experience, the past traumas, the tragedies, the grief, the loss, the successes, the failures, like that is PhD level education. Mm. You can't, cannot read that in a book. No, I right? love that. I love that because it, it's like when you practice that and you teach it, right? But I'm going to start putting LE behind my name. Yeah, I'm going to start going around putting LE <laughs> behind my name. That's beautiful. I didn't even think about it. And I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to start using that with Please. all people because that's the truth. Because when we're coaching, it, it is all made up. You do what you want to do. 
you can price it at whatever you want to price. And people are like, what do I price this? And comes up. I'm like, I don't care if you price it at $10 or it's free or you charge $300,000. Like it doesn't matter. It's the principle of what you are comfortable with. It is the integrity of what you want to do. And it's the responsibility for yourself to say, hey, you know what? I had a conversation with the coach yesterday. She says, I want to do a sliding scale. I said, fantastic. Great. But then some other conversation was just like, why would you want to do that? Don't you want to have fixed rates and blah, blah, blah. And I said, amazing. Like she was actually, I think she was waiting for me to say something negative. And I was just like, I love this. And then she's, that's it. And I'm like, that, it is your idea. It is what came from you. That is what is in alignment for you. I don't have the judgment. You don't need my judgment. And I don't need to give you your a judgment. Yeah. Because it, you've already, you stated it. That's your statement. Yeah. Very that's good. that. And she was just like, oh, we got off a call. And then she sends me a message a little later. And it like comes up. And I'm like, she goes, thank you. And I'm like, that's the best part. <laughs> right. And I think this shows up more with women entrepreneurs because we are groomed and conditioned to ask for permission, to get validation. Is this good enough? Am I okay? This is like the burning questions for women just inherently. Mm -hmm. And so what would that look like to really have full sovereignty and authority and autonomy of yourself where you don't have to ask for permission. You charge whatever you want, create whatever you want, yeah, and live however you want. What would that look like for women? Yeah. It, it's a blessing. And I'm starting to become more of the brand of the super mom CEO. Mm. And the super mom being me having super children, double meaning the super mom being super mom. Of, everyone asks you, how do you have three parts of your business and three children? And I'm like, I have a very, I think, and I think this is, comes for both me and you, is that our husbands gives us that mm-hmm. grace of if Judy says this is what's going to happen, that is what's going to happen. If Bina says this is what's going to happen, that is what's happening. Yeah, And I think it's that balance, right? My husband is okay to state, I got the kids, please go shine. My husband's okay with me spending X amount of money on whatever it is that comes in without questioning me. Yeah, It's a collaboration. There's no questions, but it's not this, why do you want to do that? Why do we should do this? Or you should do this and we should save this money and put this here and take the kids to this and- Whereas now it's more of that like depth and relationship where it's like when he needs to shine, I let him shine. And when I need to shine, he lets me shine. And I think even I can see that of knowing Eric, that is the same type of balance. And that's why our dynamics are similar in, in alignment. Yeah. Because when you have powerful women, it's the same as when you have a powerful man. Yeah. There's always that best support system behind him. Mm-hmm. Doesn't yeah. matter if you're a female and it doesn't matter if you're a male. Yeah. The only difference between me and you is that we allow or we just state what we want and they're giving us the grace of saying, go ahead without questioning yeah. versus opposites. Like, It's the same type of thing. It's just reversed. And can I just say that we are so lucky because there's not a lot of men that can handle women like us. (laughs) But I think it takes a very secure man who trusts. And I I love that for both of us. And you are spot on. And I know that I couldn't do what I'm doing without Eric's support and his love. No. There. And he's doing so much even behind the scenes that no one knows. And he's so skilled and so gifted and so many things that he helps move our business forward. And yeah. It's, and it's, it's the really same powerful. thing in my world. I would not be as successful as I am without my husband. It's a one person entrepreneurship. And I think this is the difference between women entrepreneurs versus males is that women 
as we have children, as we are moving, there's just a, it's an added tap, like an added role, right? And when we have that support system, and it doesn't have to be a husband, it could be a friend, family, whatever it is in your back pocket, it's not that we need it for validation. It just takes away some of those other hats that we are wearing. It takes away the cooking hat or the finance hat or the laundry mat hat or (laughs) the kids going to strip up or the soccer mom hat or the person who packs hat. Yeah. I just hear it's teamwork. Yeah. So good. I love that. One thing I wanted to ask you, because I don't know, my children took your book downstairs. (laughs) Um, I was like, I hope you have one. Because I wanted to talk about your book and I have read it. I read it last year, actually, when Eric dropped me off at the airport, um, gave me a copy. And if anyone has not read this book, it is literally the journey of your life from the minute you found out about your son to the decision that you guys had to make to the afterlife of what it was. And I just want to say it's a blessing to read and to hear your stories through that. And it's a turn pager. Take a box of tissues. And I just want to say you're a beautiful soul because a lot of women... If anyone's going through a situation and comes up, please read this book because it's inspirational and it will give you a lot of hope for anyone that's out there to read. And I'll make sure to send that in the links on the link. So I just want to acknowledge you for that. Because if I talk about it, I'm going to (laughs) cry. And I think you're going to (laughs) cry. And then we'll have an ugly cry, which I do all the time. (laughs) Same. (laughs) I'm not afraid of tears. No, Um. but... I also want to end on things, but I want to acknowledge you for that book because it was, I, I felt every word as I was reading it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I read it, it in four hours because it was oh that good. God. Wow. <laughs> wow. And, and thank you so much for that. Like I said, I, I've always wanted to write a book. That was not the book I wanted to write, but it was the book I needed to write. Yeah. And for me, it's a legacy piece. And something that is going to live beyond me yeah. from teenagers reading this book saying, hey, I wanted to end it all. After reading your book, I decided not to. Or kids who are struggling with addiction and throwing their pills down the toilet and turning themselves in, telling their families that they need to go to rehab. And I still get messages from kids saying, hey, it's my one year sober anniversary. And I got sober after I read your book. What is your measure of success? I don't care if this book ever, the New York Times bestseller, I I don't care. The measure of success is the changed lives. That for me means more than any kind of accolade from the book. And thank you so much for sharing that and and acknowledging. And it, it is something I'm very proud of. And it was hard. I wrote it right after Jacob passed in uh, June 27th. I started writing the book in September. So when you say you are with me and you are feeling my emotions in real time, it's because it was in real time. I think it would have been a very different book if I wrote it five years out and I'm reflecting back of what it was like. It's very raw. It's very raw book. In the moment. And to be honest, I almost didn't publish it because when the editor came back and said, okay, this is ready to go to print. It was March of 2020. Oh. Do you remember what was happening? March of 2020. Yeah. How can I not forget? I was front line. COVID. <laughs> you were front line. <laughs> All and the three rest of my kids were home. So I couldn't <laughs> use the excuse of, oh, I'm too busy. I don't have time to, to do the last edit. Cause at that point, all we had was time. But I, I remember just being face to face with that fear of if I press send, there's no turning back. Like this is going to print and I cannot take this back. And so that I remember that day very vividly because I told Eric, my husband, we already had a website up. We had already sold hundreds of pre-sales. And I said, turn the website off. We're going to refund everyone's money. I'm not releasing the book. That's what I said. (laughs) And he didn't know what to do with me. I was just freaking out. And I go to the backyard and I just start bawling and I get a phone call from a woman and she says, Hey, I don't know if you're open to hearing this, but I have a friend who has a message to you from Jacob. Are you open to hearing it? Now, 
I don't come from that world where we hear messages from the other side, right? But I was open and I said, sure, I'll listen. Why not? I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything about how that works. But all I know is that was the day I said, I'm not releasing this book. I'm in the backyard. I'm having a major meltdown. And I get this text. So I said, yeah, give her my number. This woman calls me. I'm not even making this up. This is in the call. book. She calls me and she says, hey, I have a message from Jacob. I don't know if this is going to make any sense to you, but he wants you to hurry up and finish because he wants his story to be told. And I'm like, really? <laughs> but if you knew Jacob's personality, that was totally on brand for him because he used to tell me, mom, pee or get off the pot. Like he was always like, do it or don't do it. Yeah. Not messing around. And so I knew that message definitely came from Jacob. And once I got that message, I went through the edit, the last edit, sent it off to print. And that's how the book got launched. So it was miraculous. If it was up to me, it wouldn't have launched. Jacob had to come from the other side and be like, come on, mom, you got this. <laughs> so yeah. we're not going to go there because I can still break down and cry even now. Thank you, Judy, coming in and talking with me, having this amazing conversation. If you guys want to read the book, please buy it. We will put the link and everything in the bio. It's called The Beautiful Tragedy. We'll also make sure if you guys want to have a connection with Judy, we'll make sure all her contacts and everything is in the YouTube link once it gets released out on YouTube. And Judy, any last words you want to say to the viewers out there? I just want to acknowledge you and I thoroughly enjoyed our time together and you're an amazing host, an amazing person, amazing woman, entrepreneur. And I just loved uh, our connection today. It was really wonderful. Yeah. And as far as um, your audience, if this is the road you want of entrepreneurship, fasten your seatbelt, <laughs> get a thick skin. It's not for the faint of heart, but there are so many people like you like myself, that we, I know for me, I love supporting entrepreneurs because that's my jam. I just love seeing things get birthed into the world that was not there before. And really, that's what we are as entrepreneurs. We're creators. We're creating and birthing things into the world that have never been there before. And that is my jam, my superpower. That's what I love to do. And just to encourage people to just do it. You yeah. got nothing to lose. And Everyone's story is powerful. And the more we hear about stories, whether it's written from you or spoken by somebody else, it's that is where it starts. And just follow that journey. Mm. Thank you, Judy. Bye, guys. Bye.